Good day, and here we are with yet another episode of Let's Play Dead Space. I just noticed something. It says bridge right there. I think that looks kind of cool. Never noticed that. Moving on. Things are looking up. A military ship just docked in. The USM Valor. I don't know what it was doing out there. It must have gotten our distress signal. We can't talk to it until the comms array is fixed. I'm going to hack the door to communications for you. Get in there and find the comm control station. Alright, so apparently the USM Valor. Of course, that has got to be the most unoriginal name ever. USM Valor. Bah. They won't all be horribly killed by the Necromorphs at all, even though they should be able to easily kill them all with their superior weapons, technology, suits, and all of that. Oh no. Bagman! Alright, you bastards. You know what? They may be filled with cans and some sort of nasty beer, but I don't care. You will all die. Okay, I know there's a bagman somewhere. I can't turn around and look. There he is! Shoot him in the leg! Blow him up! Unfortunately, bagmen rarely appear in Dead Space 3. Although I recently uh, actually played that Dead Space 3 Awakening DLC. Not bad. Not good. Just average. Like the game itself. Turn around. Ah, oh, damn it. Stasis. Oh, I don't have no stasis. Didn't like the ending to uh, Awakening. I could say it's roughly comparable to the unedited Mass Effect 3 ending. It just is so abrupt. No, it's not. It's not comparable to that. But damn, is it abrupt. It did get... Well, I, I'm really hurt. It did get the survival horror uh, aspects down. I'm gonna do the monster mash to see if I can't mash out some stuff. And I did. Uh, so modern games, you know... I've been playing Colonial Marines. Well, I say I've been playing Colonial Marines. Out of this recording, I still haven't actually released the Colonial Marines review, but as soon as, by the time this goes up, I know for a fact it'll be out. But yeah, you know, playing Colonial Marines recently, I, I'm sure to mention this in the review. Open, but I've been getting some weird feedback spikes on the local comms. I think someone's listening in on us, so be careful. So instead of not talking on this channel, we're going to keep talking on this channel. That way they can hear everything we say. But anyway, you know what I've noticed in games today? They always give the most basic of advice, like... If you aim with your weapon, you'll be more accurate. If you collect health packs, you can restore your health. Like, even if you've never played a video game before, why would you not collect health packs to restore your health? How would you not know this? It's common bloody sense. It's basic knowledge that should be easily inferred. Well, of course it had to hit me. Okay. Zap. But zap. Come on, and bazap. Stop shooting me, you bastard. Come on. Take the tentacle. Bazap. Bazap, I said. I'm gonna keep getting hit by the bone missile. But I'm still okay. This thing still kind of creeped me out, though. Oh, there's two. Holy crap, there's a bunch of them over there. This is a battle, ladies and gentlemen. This is a battle for the future. Cause a burning heart just about to burst. It's the iron tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. Kind of ruined the whole survival horror aspect. Come on, stick out the tentacle. Yep, there it goes. The zap. Really? I'm just gonna keep getting shot by these bone tentacle things. Okay, how's the inventory doing? Ah, uh, you know, an awakening. I was just tripping over. I should not have used that many. I was just tripping over ammo. I was tripping over health packs galore. It, it, it wasn't even funny how easy it was. You know what's, what's even worse? I didn't even have to use the plasma cutter. You know what I used? I used the bloody uh, Gatling gun. I mean, damn. I had ammo enough for that. That. A Gatling gun in a survival horror game should only be used so sparingly you barely even get a chance to use it. Oh. 
Now these guys also kind of creep me out. These guys are kind of like uh, enemies from the thing. Now I actually got an interesting story about the thing. Uh, I actually did get to see it in theaters. Obviously not when it came out. I'm not that old. I think it came out before I was even born anyway, like in 1982. Like back when my mother was my age, or you know, younger than I am now, but still pretty, still fairly old, or older at least. So obviously I didn't see it. It was before my time, but they had it at the uh, at a theater called the Alamo Draft House. That was a very interesting uh, viewing of that movie, simply because that was the last one of the last uh, movies they actually had at that particular theater. Alamo Draft House was a great theater. I actually have a video up on it uh, closing. It, it got replaced by some some other theater. I don't remember what it was. It annoyed me to no end that we had to lose such a great place. That was actually a really fine, a uh, really fine evening actually for me. Went to see that with Mizio. It was actually, it was, li think of literally the most perfect date, and that was it. You got a classic 80s movie, and all kinds of classic 80s shows, well not 80s shows, like little 80s show bits, I should say. Communications log. First comms operator Bailey reporting. The ship is under attack, but request to issue a distress call has been repeatedly denied by Captain Matthias. He won't say it, but everyone on the bridge knows why. This is an illegal operation in a prohibited system. We've all known for months, and we kept our mouths shut. Not anymore. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is USG Ishimura. This is... What the hell? I don't believe this. The whole comm system is offline. Now he's gone too far. Bailey out. So Bailey's gonna go try to bail the ship out. Ah, ha, ha. But seriously, though. Yeah, that was a fine viewing. Fine evening all around. Unfortunately... That's very rare today. Movie theaters just aren't quite as cool as they used to be, I guess. I know this is supposed to be scary, but I know what's going to happen. Yep, there he is. Bazap. Bazap. Come on. You know, when I actually play this on the 360, I just let them hit me and healed. But I'm trying for a little better of a uh, little better playthrough. But you gotta love how this ship is literally designed to be as scary as possible. You know, like, how, where are you supposed to sit on this thing? That's my question. You've been working all day. Do you want to stand up? A service technician has been notified. Yeah, but he's union, so he's on break right now. Symmetrically, so it basically means puzzle, 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 which is actually easy. I'll tell you this, the puzzles in Resident Evil 4, uh, for a Resident Evil game, were not actually that difficult. I know some people s will decry that as horrible, but at the same time, you know, I liked it because I actually continued playing the game, and I just went the wrong, bloody way. But you know what's interesting about, uh, Mizio and myself? We actually just got back today. You know what we were doing? We went to the bloody Half Price Bookstore. Is that not the most awesome thing, or what? I could not... I could not praise Mizio enough, but I'll stop because she's actually right here and she doesn't like praise. She'll hit me. No, Mizio. No. No. I'm clearly not making a fake static noise. But anyway. She's actually playing League of Legends, as I can see. I tried that game myself. Didn't really like it that much. That's because you suck at it. Well, I do. My guy, like, waddles around and That's I have no. That's because you're not doing it right. Well, I don't know. I just, I just didn't like it. Because you're not doing it right. Well, I think I'll stick to Dead Space. Although, you know, that's the thing about Dead Space. I'll stick to this game. Yeah, right. It's not a game you can play over and over again, whereas League of Legends is something you can play all the time because each playthrough is different. It's just the thing. A linear game like this is not really a game in my book. It is and it isn't. Wow, that's a lot of leapers. Because... Unlike with something like League of Legends, uh, it's all can be pretty much the same each time you play it, th play, th play it through. So it's kind of like watching a movie or a, you know, a TV show or something like that. You're in it for really the story and the gameplay, but it's just not something you can play all the time. What I consider real, you know, game games are games like uh, Star Wars Battlefront, especially Battlefront 2. Uh, it's games you can just get into at any time and just play, you know? 
There's no story. There's no linearity, and I'm out of ammo. That's not good. There's no story. No real. Ah, oh, damn it! I healed by accident. Damn it! I missed him. Why do I keep missing you? All right, body shot. And he went down. But yeah, like Battlefront and Battlefront 2, uh, it's just a game I can get into and play at any time. Multiplayer games are games you can just play all the time. But games like this, you know, you really can't because it's really just the same game over and over again. Although, back... <laughs> and Vizio's back with another cameo. So this is the combo raid. Just a bunch of little radar dishes. That just doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, how do I do this puzzle here? I think I know how. Just get rid of the red dishes here. Make sure it doesn't smack Isaac upside the head. Find the working ones. Oh, I did fly over here. But anyway. Uh, but yeah, a, a game like Dead Space you're not going to be able to play a bunch of times. It's, it's going to get old fast. That's why I can't really play games like... Uh, like KOTOR or KOTOR 2 anymore because I played them so much. I swear, I must have played through KOTOR 2 and for those who don't know what KOTOR is, it's Knights of the Old Republic 2. Uh, at least... I'd say at least 10 or more times. That had mainly to do because I just didn't have the money to buy a bunch of new games all the time, but I played it that many times because it was just that amazing. And at least you, there was some random randomization in that. Come on, get in the bloody socket! Okay, so we got... Dishes. Now, what was the objective again? What did she want us to do? How many dishes had to be aligned? Fix the array. It doesn't say how to fix it, it just says fix it. Okay. Uh, fix the array. You saw a circle of working ones. Oh, I might have already fixed it because that is a circle of working runs right now. Uh, let's see. Hey, what the hell is that? Oh, it's one of those. Good, I can at least sell that. Let's see, is there any more loot in here? Because that's what this game is about. Loot. It's not about the survival or the horror. It's just looting everything. Really, why was there a thousand credits right there? Wh who puts those there? That's, uh, I just don't get why they do that. Recently, uh, I've been reading... A actually, recently I just read, I should say. A book called Orcs. Very interesting book. Uh, it's where orcs are actually articulate and not just a bunch of barbarians. And maybe this will work? Okay. What, did I just do something stupid? Probably. And hey, what can I say? I wasn't fully paying attention all I actually was. There's probably a, a switch in here I have to press. Turn it on in here and then turn it on there. Oh, wh why exactly does this need an airlock? Entering zero gravity. Is this not like I can actually get at, open this up to space? Oh wow, I missed one. I can't believe that. Is my attention to detail that poor? Yeah. I guess it is. So, poor Isaac. He's just having an off day, I guess. I'm blaming it on Isaac, you know? Isaac's going crazy, so he lost his engineering ability. See, that is how you handle, you know, sensitive electronic equipment. You just hurl it across a room. Why? Because you can. You gotta love engineering in this universe, too. All you gotta do is just pull these giant blocky things and put them into things. There we go. My question is this, if she has access to the whole computer system, why doesn't she send it herself? Exiting zero gravity. That's a valid question, I think. A very valid question. Why doesn't she do that? Is she just lazy, or does everything have to be pressed by Isaac? No one else knows how to turn anything on. And just look at how shiny that is. Look at that. Radio totally works this way. Casting on all frequencies to USGE Shimura. It's Iron Man! 
Hello, Tony. How have you been? In the trailer, I saw your house get blown off. That must have been an expensive insurance payment. Uh-oh. One of those things was on board. No. No, this isn't going to happen. It is going to happen because they're stupid. Come in, Valor. Our signal isn't strong enough. I'm going to open the blast doors to boost the signal. Then why have this communications array at all if it can't... Look at how shiny it is. Look at how all the electrical things are going. Shit. Isaac, there's something big on the hull of the ship, directly above the comms array. Something organic. I don't know what it is, and I don't care. We have to get the doors open to transmit to the Valor. You should have a clear shot from ADS Cannon 48. Get to the cannon and blow it out into space. Blow it out into space. Well, you know what? Since the ADS Cannon is in space, it's already in space to begin with. Also, why have this... Well, you can't reach anything! That's a huge bloody logic flaw right there. Well, with that logic flaw, we're actually going to bring this episode to a close.